The Eurofighter Typhoon is exactly 15 meters and 960 millimeters long, and the tolerance of the entire assembly is about a millimeter. I am trying to measure 15 meter 0 0.960 in my garden with 1 millimeter tolerance. How hard it could be! But before seeing how I did in the end, let's go back to the 8th of August 1986. The 8th of August 1986, the British Aerospace EAP took the skies for the first time. The EAP was a technology demonstrator whose purpose was to explore several new technologies that were deemed essential for the new generation fighter. In this video we are going to focus on the structural design of the Eurofighter, so among the technologies tested on the EAP we will focus mainly on composite materials. In fact, the Eurofighter is known to be a plastic plane, with 82% of the aircraft weight being made by composite materials. 70% is carbon fiber based and 12% is fiberglass based. The large scale use of composite materials in a fighter like aircraft was tested on the EAP. In fact, now we know composite much better and they are sort of becoming the standard aircraft construction material. But at the time, it was a revolutionary move justified by the potential weight reduction. On the EAP, large segments of the front fuselage, the canards, and both wings were built in carbon fiber reinforced polymers. We could easily dedicate an entire video series to composites and maybe we will do one day. What is important to understand now is why such an extensive test was necessary. So the first reason is that in an era when structural computer simulations were rare and expensive, it wasn't entirely clear how to use these composites. Composite materials, in the case of the Eurofighter, are made of a fabric of carbon filament or fiberglass covered with a thermosetting binding polymer. It is sort of intuitive how the behavior of composites is not isotropic like metal. So if you pull in the direction of the fabric fibers, the maximum stress for strain is different than if you pull perpendicular. So to use composites, you need to understand where the stresses will be in the structure and build the composite elements in a way that they will be capable of bearing those stresses. In practice, you need to put the material where it's needed and exactly how much is needed to bear that specific stress. Just adding extra material to stay on the safe side, it's okay with metals, but may not be of any use because it may not be capable of bearing that small stray stress that was unaccounted for during the design. And this is because that small strain stress may not be applied in the right direction. For example, a panel that covers part of the wing or the fuselage may easily bear the traction stresses, but if it happens to be twisted by an unforeseen load, it might easily bend and break. The second reason that required extensive testing was fatigue. In metals, local imperfections inside the material may cause areas that can't withstand stresses as well as the rest of the material. These areas break, creating micro cracks that grow over time and make the piece less resistant to stress overall. This is the so-called metal fatigue, and it is well known. At the time, the fatigue behavior of composites, particularly in such large and complex assemblies as they were requested on a fighter, was still mostly an unknown. And to be honest, even today, composites are less predictable than metals, albeit we have progressed a lot since the 80s. This was an extremely important consideration because composites tend to be very stiff and brittle, and when they fail, they tend to fail catastrophically. With metal, you may catch the micro cracks while they're forming, or you can see some permanent strain. Composites do not warn you as early as metal. So you may ask, why bother? Why using them if they require such extra care? Well, there are two good reasons. 
To be honest, a complete comparison between metal and composites would take us very, very far. But the main reason to make composites attractive to build a fighter is that when you account for all the material and the design that is needed uh, to, to reach a specific performance, the final result is lighter and stiffer. And every kilo saved on the structure is extra payload or increased acceleration or longer range. It is difficult to say how much the Eurofighter is lighter than its equivalent to build with traditional aluminum alloys, for example, because the two aircraft's structural design would have been very different. As a rule of thumb, we may say that such an aircraft may have gained around a 10% of the structural weight. The structural weight, not the overall empty weight. But anyway, don't be fooled, it is a big difference in performance. From a structural point of view, the Eurofighter is quite an interesting aircraft. The wing structure in particular is quite different from the other deltas. In fact, it's not possible to identify the main spars because there are several spars, all irradiating from the wing tip at different angles with the aircraft axis and all more or less of the same size. They are attached to a thick root rib that closes the wing box. The wings are mated to the fuselage with the three large joints that connect a thick box inside the wing, housing the undercarriage, with three large bulkheads in the central section of the fuselage. So it seems that there is no structural continuity between the two wings and yet the aircraft is considered very stiff, which is one of the distinctive characteristics of the Eurofighter. This is a surprising solution, but clearly it works. In fact, usually the spars will be perpendicular to the aircraft axis and the main spars will join through the fuselage, making the wings a single structure. The paneling is mostly carbon reinforced plastic and the moving surfaces are built with an internal honeycomb structure. The fuselage is more traditional with bulkheads and longerons but with little use of stringers and this again is a testament to the stiffness of the structural design. Since the aircraft is an international cooperation, sections of the aircraft are built in each country and then mated together and with the engines. Biosystems produces the aircraft's forward fuselage, the foreplanes, the canopy, the windscreen, the spine assembly, the vertical stabilizers and the air brake, the inboard flaperons and part of the aft fuselage. Germany's Airbus is responsible for the center fuselage. Italy's Leonardo builds the left wing, the outboard flaperons and the remainder of the aft fuselage. Spain's Airbus uh, builds the right wing and the leading gauge slats for both the left and right wings. The mating tolerance is very small. The tolerance on the length of the aircraft is less than a millimeter and it led to the development of a specific rig to laser check it. The reason for such a precision is that the more precise the aircraft is, the more the stresses will be exactly as designed, the more the structural components will be capable of optimally bearing them and the longer they will bear them. Which basically means an aircraft assembled with perfect tolerances will last longer than one that barely fits in them. And this brings us to the initial experiment. Did I manage to measure exactly 50 meters and 960 millimeters in my garden? That's difficult. Nine six one fifteen meter nine sixty fifteen meter nine sixty. This is the length tip to tail of a Eurofighter. 
Thank you very much for watching this video and thank you to all those who are supporting the channel by one of donations on PayPal, on Patreon or by being a member. You have no idea how important you are for me and I bring you all in my heart. This is the third video in an ongoing series dedicated to the Eurofighter and if you're interested to this aircraft, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. This is another way to support the channel. You are basically telling YouTube that what we are doing here is interesting. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.